Well, I hope you're having a great day. We've been talking about a great subject this week. We've been talking about God's incredible forgiveness. And yesterday I said, what are the characteristics of that forgiveness? And first of all, we find that God's forgiveness is gracious. It's, it's not of merit. It's absolutely free. It's God just giving it to us freely by His grace. Now, secondly, God's forgiveness is complete forgiveness. It's complete forgiveness. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. It's absolutely complete, fully there. You say, oh, but pastor, I am too rotten of a sinner. Well, we all are. But Romans 5.20 says, But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Oh, just revel in that for a moment. Where sin abounded, and certainly it has, grace did much more abound. God's forgiveness is complete forgiveness. In fact, the Apostle John just flatly states, he says this in 1 John 2.12, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His sake, not for your sake, for Jesus' sake. And so it's complete forgiveness. It's gracious forgiveness. Thirdly, God's forgiveness is an eager forgiveness. In other words, He wants to forgive. He's eager to forgive. In Ezekiel 33, 11, the Bible says, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. God is wanting to forgive us. His forgiveness is an eager forgiveness. He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way. Oh, and then he laments, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. God's forgiveness is an eager forgiveness. In Psalm 86 and in verse number 5, the psalmist says, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Do you need forgiveness today? Well, God's good. He's ready to forgive. He's plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon him. You know, He forgives us because He's anxious to do it. <laughs> Fourthly, God's forgiveness is a certain forgiveness. You don't have to wonder, don't have to question, don't have to speculate, don't have to hope. In Acts 26, 18, Jesus tells us that He came to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Isn't that a glorious, glorious verse? Forgiveness is certain because it's based on God's promises, and there's plenty of them in that verse. Now, fifthly, God's forgiveness is unequaled forgiveness. There's nothing that can equal it. The, the prophet Micah said in Micah 7, 18, Who is a God like unto thee, who pardoneth iniquity, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. Isn't that wonderful? Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? And then I like this part. He retaineth not his anger forever. Why? Because he delighteth in mercy. God delights in mercy. You know, the answer to his question is that there is none like that. None of the gods of the false religion offer such forgiveness, but the one true God, Jehovah. Now, number six, God's forgiveness is motivating. It ought to compel us to do likewise. In Ephesians 4.32, the Bible says, And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Notice those words, even as God. For Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So we're to forgive because we've been forgiven. God's forgiveness is motivating. God has forgiven us the, the huge, unpayable debt that we owed Him. So how can we do any less than to forgive others the trivial debts that they owe us? You know, there was a woman who was talking to her pastor. And she said this. She said, well, I'll forgive Debbie, but, but I never want to have anything more to do with her. And her pastor replied, is that the way you want God to forgive you? 
I don't want anything to do with you after that. I'll forgive you, but get out of my sight. No, that's not forgiveness. So we've talked about the cadaverous condition. We've talked about the conscious conversion. Thirdly, let's talk about the canceled condemnation. The canceled out condemnation. The Bible calls the law, the handwriting of ordinances written against us. We had this, this condemnation written against us. I mean, who can keep the Ten Commandments? Well, who's ever put anything ahead of God? All of us. Taken His name in vain. Uh, made a God of our own imagination. Dishonored our parents. Not honored the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Lusted after the opposite sex. Or had bitterness and hatred in our heart towards somebody. Stolen something we shouldn't. Lied coveted, here we are. And so here's this law, the handwriting of ordinances against us. And the Bible mentions what the law cannot do. The law cannot save us. Keeping the law cannot save us. You know, some people, they're shocked by the, the assertion that there are some things the law cannot do, but there are plenty of things the law cannot do. It can't reveal, uh, or it can only reveal sin, but it's powerless to save us from it. It can show us our weakness, but it can't provide the strength to get victory over sin. It can only condemn, it can't justify. The law commands, but it, it doesn't enable. The law slays, but grace alone can make alive. And so we need grace. We need forgiveness. And when it comes to the forgiveness of God, it's absolutely incredible. I've enjoyed talking about it this past week. I'm going to hopefully finish up with this tomorrow. So join me back here then. And with that, have a great day. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joy.